So here we are, a long, painful seven months after we first teased the concept of building the first ever Linus Media Group Gaming Lounge. And ironically, pretty much everything else about this space is done. So we've got our side table here. This just arrived. It's still got all the protective stuff on it. We've got our uh, board games table here. This is actually a bit of a placeholder, but whatever, we could play board games. We've got the media lounge. That is like, it's freaking awesome. And the one part we haven't actually started on yet is the actual LAN gaming center. Fortunately, everything's here! Woo! Those are, oh, yeah! You Oh my God. So it's time for us to finally build the first real system. Except that we had a small problem. We were having trouble getting the Core i7 processors that we had intended to use from our prototype system way back when. So we figured, you know what? Well, we're only running RTX 2070s anyway. Would AMD really be that much of a performance compromise here? Let me hold this. Well, there's only one way for us to find out. The Moss Grande backpack is the perfect companion for laptops of up to 17 inches since the bag is water resistant and padded for protection. Also, it has an orange interior. Check it out at the link below. So before we get into building our actual final spec rig, I guess a bit of a haul video is kind of in order here, isn't it? Man, this is a lot of hardware. Every system is getting a G903? No, no, it's, it, it's actually worse. We, we went a little further than that. We went even Those further over the top? Those are extras. Every system is getting one of Logitech's pro wireless gaming mice. Okay, as if half the people that are gonna be using it are even skilled enough to know the difference. Everyone's getting a G513 Carbon with their Romer G linear switches. Everyone's getting a G935 headset, and thanks to Logitech's recent acquisition of blue microphones, a Yeti Nano mic, because, you know, the built-in headset mic, I mean, we've got it. It's not like it's not a super high-end headset, but we're, we're gonna use an off-board mic, you know, whatever. Then, moving into the systems themselves, we're running Ryzen 2700X processors. So yes, we lose a little bit of single-threaded performance compared to the 8700Ks we initially spec'd, but we can probably overclock them a little, and quite frankly, in the eSports titles that we'll be running for the most part, I don't expect it to make a difference, although we will be testing that out today and then cooling them we're going to be using h100i rgb platinum water coolers from corsair we're going to be pairing them with 16 gigs each of ddr4 2666 megahertz rgb ram from also corsair every system gets an mp300 480 gig boot drive do we have hard drives for these uh yes and octane oh nice everyone's getting a brio 4k pro webcam so everything's gonna be stream ready and Optane, all the Optane. All the Optane. Ugh. Oh wow, okay. So that's pretty cool. That means our 480 gig SSD is gonna handle OS duties and any critical applications. And then our hard drives are actually gonna have accelerated caching so that the games that are played most frequently, even if they are on magnetic storage, are still gonna load faster than if they were just on a hard drive. Also pulling cooling duty, Corsair sent over a whole bunch of their Light Loop 120 fans. First, let's talk about what they're gonna be driving. So Asus sent over 12 of their VG279 gaming monitors. So these are 1080p IPS with three millisecond response times and they run at 144 Hertz. So these are basically, you're kind of no frills, but still looks really great gaming monitor. They don't have G-Sync, but now that Nvidia has enabled G-Sync on FreeSync displays, we're not expecting that to be a problem for our GeForce RTX 2070 graphics cards. The whole thing's gonna be hooked into Asus's Tough Series B450M Plus gaming motherboard and installed in a Crystal Series 280X case from Corsair. For power, we've gone way over the top. Seasonic sent over their prime titanium 1000 watt modular power supply. I told them like 750 plus. This is literally three times the power we actually need, but cool, thanks, I guess. 
Actually, a couple things I forgot. Minor details. Aquantia sent over their 10 gig Nix. So guys, we don't expect this to make a difference to the actual gaming experience, but while installing games off our Steam caching server, which you can check out the video about up here, this will definitely make a difference while we're pulling down from all these machines at once. So that's gonna be sick. And these chairs from Maxnomics. So we haven't actually reviewed one of their chairs in quite some time but this is still my daily driver in my office. Actually, not quite this one, but a similar model. And I'm super excited that when we're here for hours after work, we are gonna be sitting on something as comfortable as their classic office chair. We got the black one, right, Jake? Yeah, and it's embroidered. Oh, that looks awesome! As the kids would say. I'm not a kid anymore, I'm not saying it. I just wanna hear you say it. It's lit, it's lit, yeah. Lit AF. Lit AF, thank you. Thank you. See, I knew you were gonna say it. Damn it, I said it. Okay, so while Jake puts together a couple of the chairs, which we're gonna need for our head-to-head -head mono a mono gaming session, I'm gonna put together one of our final AMD-based rigs so we can find out when we put it head-to-head -head against our original Intel-based prototype over here, how much, if any, performance we're leaving on the table with our 2700Xs. You know what, I think I'm gonna mix things up for this build. I'm gonna start by getting everything ready in the case, then I'm gonna put together my core platform on my motherboard here. I haven't even gotten as far as putting the fans into the case and we've already found a problem. Because we changed from an Intel board to an AMD board, sort of midway through this project, we might have overlooked a small compatibility issue. Now, it's nothing sort of game ending here. We still have room for our triple slot graphics card and our 10 gigabit NIC, but what we are losing is the ability to put in our Optane module because this board only has a single M.2 slot. And yeah, there's no additional one on the back or anything like that. Yeah, that's a little disappointing actually. Uh, hey, so Jake, how are we arranging the fans on these things? Because we can either design it for optimal airflow and have two in, two out. Uh, or we can have our light loop rings all visible externally and it can look badass. And then it'll be like highly positive pressurized. But, but they're all filtered. Two in, two out. Two in, two out? Yeah, you gotta. Better than the system's overheating. He's not gonna do it. I just wanted to check something real quick with you though. However I build this first one, that's how we'll have to build all of them, right? Well, so I, could always, I could always just fix it. All right, I guess this one is done now, hey? Not bad? Pretty good, man. I mean, it's just, I have this exact same chair at my desk, so. Oh yeah, uh, Vivo sent over their, um, so they don't actually sell a complete desk. They just uh, I think sell, they do, do they? Yeah. Well, that's not what we got. We and needed a big one, right? That's not the one that I bought the other week either. Um, yeah, they, they sell just like a standing, sitting, like leg assembly. So that's what we're gonna be putting these custom D-brand skinned MDF tabletops on top of. I'm actually super stoked for how good that's gonna look. Those things are really heavy, please be careful. So this is a pretty cool little piece of kit. This is a Corsair Commander Pro, and it plugs in using SATA for power and then USB for data. And then it's got all your LED ports here. You've got up to six fans that you can plug in directly. It's got temp sensors right here and then two USB internal headers in case you have a motherboard that only has one and then you're taking it up with this thing. Well, this way you can plug your front panel USB 2 into this or any other accessories like, say for example, one of Corsair's own CPU coolers, which we are probably gonna need to do in this case. So we're gonna replace our existing fan hub with this guy. Yeah, cable management. Man, I tell you, the adhesive that they use to hold the original LED and fan controllers in is ridiculous. I should barely get that thing off. Sounds like something a beta male would say. Ah, oh, holy crap, though. Ow! <laughs> like, look at my fingers! What, are you gonna cry too? You know what? You take it off. Show me how it's done, alpha guy. Oh man, that's pretty on there. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> 
was really loosened a lot. Uh huh. Why did they put that much adhesive on? Look, I love you guys at Corsair. Great, great people. Sent us a lot of hardware for this project. Okay, yeah, we're going full RGB ringness here. It's taking me as long to do the RGB wiring as it would to build a normal computer. Of course, it'll be all worth it. But like, we've got the two, we've got the, the Commander Pro, we've got the RGB hub, we've got the, the leads for all the strips and all the fans, two power leads for the whole thing. And I think we're finally ready to put a motherboard in it. Look at the chairs though. But the chairs are done. God damn it. You know, the funny thing is I've always just kind of used whatever. Like, brand loyalty is not a thing for me. But because the community's perception of me as some kind of fanboy, one way or the other, is so strong, it feels a little bit naughty building an AMD system. <laughs> See, check this out. This is what I love about this case. This side, like, look at that. Does that look clean or what? And then this side, in typical Linus fashion. <laughs> I'm like getting pretty close here, actually. I just gotta pop the power supply in, wire that up, and then I need my uh, graphics card, network card, and then I'm good to go. I don't know who would use this as a standing desk, but maybe if you're like an NBA player or something. <laughs> well, I wasn't sure if I could do it, but after giving it my best effort, I think I've succeeded in making the contrast between my cable managed side and my non-cable managed side, even more stark. Good job, Linus. It's a real shame about that video card saggage. That's actually not that bad. Uh, it's not great. I was expecting it to be a lot worse than that. I'm all... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm also I... a little upset about the one yellow accent. Can you just get the T out of there? Finish the T off, so it's just uff gaming. Gaming. <laughs> so gamers. You have to do this. Like, like this. Like yeah. that? Uh, like this. Like otherwise, a shake weight, right? otherwise it's not you don't get the white out. Look. Uh, otherwise it's look just Look how beta his his writing game is here. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Thanks to uh, Aki for sending these mouse pads. XL mouse pads. Very nice with the braided edge. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Nice, okay, so my NIC is showing up, my 16 gigs of RAM is all showing up, my hard drive is not showing up. Oh, it might be a SAS drive. I just grabbed something off the shelf because our drives didn't actually arrive. Okay, I will figure that out later. But we still have a couple things to do here, so I'm gonna set our DOCP, so that's uh, AMD's XMP equivalent, which should configure our RAM to its optimized settings and then install Windows. So this is it. Ish. Finished AMD system versus Not finished. the old concept <laughs> Intel system. On a test bench. I mean, really the point of all of this is to find out how much we compromised by going AMD. So uh, I think we're two and two right now, aren't we, Jake? Is that, does that sound right? Also, I'm pretty sure that while I was pretty far behind before, <laughs> you're dead again, and uh, my kill count is pretty close. Oh, oh, would you look at that? Am I out ahead now? Huh, because I remember you talking some smack about how you're like a young, hip gamer or some shit. Ah! Oh, nice. <laughs> Spawned right behind you, you like that? Performance-wise. Oh, it's, it's not making a difference. It literally doesn't matter. Uh, what are you at in terms of FPS? Oh, like around 300, 250? 250. It really depends on where you are in the map. Yep. I'm anywhere from like 150 to 250. <laughs> yeah! I didn't have ammo. Okay, we're here. This is me. It's okay, me. it's me. It's me. Okay, so let's just look hey, down look. the look down the thing. I just want to know what the FPS difference is like, okay? Mine's higher. What? Yeah, yours is quite a bit higher, Do actually. Do you have anything in the background? No. I mean, remember, CSGO is a notoriously Intel favoring game. Right. So yes, there's a difference, but like, I didn't feel for a second like I was affected by the difference. And you know, when we're talking 150 versus uh, yeah, it made no 240 difference. FPS, I'm, I'm all right with it. Okay, why don't we try a different game? GG? Yeah. You can't alt tab out of this game. Yeah, I won. Okay. Man, I haven't played on 1080p in a hot minute. It's a little different than 
1440p ultra wide. Yeah, like it's it's like a 10 FPS difference. Well, remember, CSGO was behind, so I was thinking about like it for a, little a second. Bit. Okay. But like CSGO was behind in the context of like 160 versus 240 FPS. Like it's not. I don't terribly even. It important. wasn't that much. It felt like it was like 30. Mm, no, it was, it was a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, there's two. Crap. Oh, okay. Man. Well, sorry. Oh, we got wrecked. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't bad. No, the frame rates are good. I mean. Yeah. Dang it. And did you did more damage. All right. All right. So you're better at the game that only you play and that I don't play. So, okay, that's good, that's good. So then that's our takeaway. Jake isn't actually that great at video games in spite of being one of the young kids. Actually, depending on you know what game you're playing, you might even get a better gaming experience with the 2700X, which did surprise me in Apex Legends anyway. And so that's like a hundred bucks cheaper. No regrets then. Now we just have to build 11 more. That's my regret. That's <laughs> my only regret is doing it 11 times. Having this idea. <laughs> all right, so I guess all that's left now, other than preparing ourselves to do this 11 more times, <laughs> is to thank our sponsor for this video, FreshBooks. So if you're a small business owner or a freelancer, FreshBooks is the counting solution for you. It's a simple way to be more productive, more organized and to get paid faster. With FreshBooks, you can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. You can set up online payments to get paid up to four days faster. You can see when your client has seen your invoice to put an end to the guessing games and you can take the whole experience with you on the go with their fully featured apps for both iOS and Android. So don't take my word for it. Try out FreshBooks for free for 30 days at freshbooks.com slash tech tips. We're gonna have that linked in the video description and just make sure you enter Linus tech tips in the how did you hear about us section. So thanks for watching guys. If you just like this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the links uh, in the video description. That's also cool. down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.